All right, we have the great fortune of sitting down with our current friends, former colleagues, Patrice King-Brown and Stacey Smith as we celebrate KDK-TV's 75th anniversary. Such a big milestone. We are all so honored to be part of the history of this amazing TV station. You guys have been anchors together for a long time. Ken and I have been anchors, we figured out 18 years? Yes. 18 years yes. together. Any idea how long it was for you guys about? Uh, about 20, I think, yeah, we were about together. 20 years, yeah. Yeah. All right, about you win. Yeah. <laughs> now, well, right now, because you guys got a long way to go. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. So you two were actually on the air. <laughs> yes, we were. Just we were. Wanted to make sure. Yeah, yes, we, Seth, uh, yeah. On occasion. Uh, of course, Patrice, Patrice started a long time before I did. Uh, uh, well, Patrice started with six years. Oh, oh, I did actually. Yes, as a teenager. <laughs> no, I thought she, I was thinking. Wait a minute, you're teasing. She started a lot. Because I'm saying you had a great radio career and you did news before you came here. Oh yeah, yeah. But absolutely. here, yes. Absolutely. You started in '77. I, I started in '83. Yes. I was here for 38 years. I think you for 34. Yes. So I just figured out if this is the 75th anniversary of KDKA. I was here for more than half of the yes, years you were. Yes, the station's been on wow, the air. That's yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. And I've yeah. always thought how what the station is today uh, is so we owe it to those who came before, and you guys set a standard, and uh, you know we strive to uphold that. And Ray Tannehill and Bill Burns oh and Patty God. Burns and Wayne Van Dyne, so many others. Oh, so, so many, many so many others. So many others. So many great with with Patrice, of course, is that she didn't start in news. No, she started on something called Pittsburgh Today, which is still in existence. But a different, different format. Absolutely a different format, yes. Yeah, so I did talk for many, many years, yeah. which was really fun, but I also think it was a, a really good way to, to start in television, to be very comfortable in television and you know hone skills in interviewing and et cetera, and then writing as we ca came into news, you know, and it was different. And I had, as you mentioned, the people before us. I mean, Patty had, yeah. you know, I had Patty Burns ahead and Ray and Al Julius and Bill Burns and just all those people and many of them I had watched growing up because I grew up here. Yeah. You know, it's a wonderful gift to be able to have had the career that I had in my hometown. Oh, that at, at question. this station. Well, the other part about it is, of course, in in '77 when you started, I came here in '83, and at that time Pittsburgh was the 12th ranked. It city. was. It was. And I think when you started, it was probably around nine. Nine. Yes, it was exactly. the ninth. We were in the ninth so market. You yeah. can imagine with a with a live afternoon program with a live studio audience, in the ninth largest city that when you had celebrities, actors, singers, whatever it might be, come through town, they came on they Pittsburgh came Today they did. with you. They did, they came through. I, I couldn't believe the people had an, you know, an opportunity to give, meet. Give us a couple of the names. Well, you know, and, I mean, now this was, again, 70s, you know, so they were the stars of the day. Some of them had been, my, one of my very first interviews was a gentleman by the name of Charlton Heston. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And Charlton Heston, of course, is, was a major star in Hollywood. And he came through here, and I'm thinking in my head, I'm talking to Moses. Because <laughs> the, big, the biggest movie he did right. at that time in my life was The Ten Commandments, yeah. you know. Yeah. But different professional people. The, you know, this was also the, the era of the Steelers, the, who, what I always thought of as the real Steelers, you know, Franco and Lynn and, and John Stallworth and Terry Bradshaw and, you know, the, the those Steelers, Steel Curtain, um, other people coming through, Elizabeth Taylor. Oh my goodness. You know, who actually did have violet eyes and incredibly long eyelashes, you know, wow. a double row of eyelashes. Uh, first ladies, you know, you know, we talked about mm -hmm. that, Stacey. Had a chance to talk to all the first ladies from Lady Bird Johnson um, up until uh, Michelle Obama. And then, of course, you know, Lady Bird Johnson wasn't first lady when I interviewed her because I'm older, but I'm not that old, you know? <laughs> but you know, still Barbara Bush, I use her, she said, gave me her recipe for uh, apple crisp. We she have it every holiday. She was great, she, I interviewed her great? once. I interviewed her once and it was at, at, at the old whale's tail on Fifth Avenue. And um, she was upstairs and she had been doing a radio interview. This was in, uh, let's see, it would have been uh, 90, maybe 88 when, mm -hmm. when he was running, running, the first time he was running, uh, her husband, George H.W. Bush. And so she was upstairs doing a radio interview, and then she came back downstairs where we were gonna do the TV interview, and she sat down, we got about five minutes into it, and she went like this, and she said, oh my, I left my earring upstairs. She, and she was, <laughs> and it, was, it was like, unflappable though, you know, but mm -hmm. she had taken the earring off to hold the phone to phone talk. Up. So yeah, yeah. She was great. She was great, and, and, and again, it, this is not like a political thing, it was just wonderful oh. to spend yeah. time with, with some of these people. Um, I think about some of the other people who came through. Uh, Rosa Parks, wow. you know, to talk with Rosa, to have a chance to talk with Rosa Parks, so cool. to, to talk to 
Coretta Scott King yeah. um, and, the, and their children at, at different times. Um, I mean, there, was, there were just so many newsmakers, entertainers, mm -hmm. You know, Julio Iglesias, who came through and, you know, flirted with every woman in the, <laughs> very intently, in the, in the studio, um, and has everybody going, oh, you know. Um, How did John Burnett put up with that? <laughs> well, oh, and you know, he was, and John, oh well, my gosh, John Burnett. Oh, John's the Such a. We both got to host PTL with John, with actually, John. now That's that I right. think about it. That's yeah. Right. Although you had the L, we didn't. Yes, Ours was we the Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh with the two. Live, yes. Yeah, yeah and you had the live. Well, but I mean, that's what's so amazing about KDKA is I was the last one here, but coming from, you know, not having grown up here, everyone knows KDKA. Yeah. I mean, it's the only station on the East Coast with the K letters. Yes. It's got such a great history. So, you know, whether you grew up here or not, it's like so, so legendary. And I just remember watching you guys, you know, working here before I worked here and just how exciting it was to be able to be part of this and walking in and feeling like it was this family. Do, hasn't it always had kind of a family absolutely. atmosphere in absolutely. the newsroom? Yep. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and I'm sure you guys have experienced it too. Other people would come through here or come into the station to work and they would say, this newsroom feels different yeah. than other newsrooms. You know, um, and we worked hard and we were really proud of the work that we did. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think that the standards were very high and we worked hard at keeping them high. Um, it was really very important. Right? Well, and when you were fortunate to have lengthy careers as you did here, mm -hmm. and as we are hopefully going to continue for at least a little bit longer, <laughs> yeah. um, you do literally, somebody said it recently, you grew up together. You, yes. you are, are, are there for each other when you're getting married and having kids and having grandkids and all of life's events. You're sharing it with this work family. And I think in other places where you may not have that type of career longevity, that's a much, it's a more unusual thing. Yeah. So yeah. I think we may take it for granted, mm -hmm. but it's special. It's absolutely special. Yeah, well, when you think about standing on the shoulders or, and not that any of us ever, I, none of us achieved what Bill Burns <laughs> achieved, although I do tell you, you have been the Dean of News. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know. um, but the standard was set so high to make sure that you had the facts, that you had the right story, you told it well, um, and move on, and not your opinion. I remember, you, you know, nobody, want, they're like, we don't want to hear your opinion, we want the facts. And it was our goal to be good journalists and tell those stories well. Not that Bill didn't have opinions about Oh, pigeon, oh no, he had a lot of opinions. In particular, opinion. if I recall. <laughs> yeah. Stacy, you've been gone, is it two? Two years. Two years, Patrice? A little over two years. Patrice, it's 10 years? It is, yes. What do you miss about it? I'm assuming there's something you miss about it. <laughs> Can we talk about that later? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Know. No. <laughs> we can come back to that. Yeah. The com but I, one of the things is the camaraderie in, this, in the newsroom. Um, and you talk about that family feel. Yeah. That, has, that was something that was very important. And having it again, to be, to be in the station, the memories and the ghosts here, you know, um, that was really, really important. And to do it well and to feel that you were respecting uh, the, tr the tradition. You were, it, they created an amazing situation in 1949 that, and then went forward, and we were just trying to uphold all that. But we can come back to that someday. Yeah, exactly. No, uh, it, it, basically just doing the news, I, I, I still miss. I, I miss the opportunity to tell the viewer at home what is going on that day and to do it, as you said, Patrice, uh, hopefully without any uh, opinion on, on my side. And uh, that's, I may have an opinion, but mm -hmm. hopefully the viewer never knows what that is. Mm -hmm. You're not anti-pigeon. No, I never was. <laughs> never was. Um, I think pigeons have every right to be living the life that they lead. I don't think they need a, a any better life than what they have. Yeah, yeah, fair minded. Yeah, I think that's true. Fair minded. Yeah. Yeah. When, um, when I think of, uh, of the two of you on the air together, uh, this is just part of working in, in television news. Uh, some crises come to mind and how we navigated those as a news team. And I think of you guys uh, with your coverage being carried nationally. Uh, after the crash of U.S. Air Flight 427. When you reflect on your careers, is that where your minds go to those moments of incredible uh, stress where you're, you're pushed to your limits as a journalist um, and you are really, you're having to operate on all cylinders and keep so much in your mind and keep so much straight and avoid speculating and all of the challenges that go into that live breaking news kind of coverage? I think first of all, if I can interject and, mm -hmm. and say that a lot of it, and you two know this, is how well you work with your co-anchor. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was interesting. I came here in 83, <clears throat> and Patrice was doing Pittsburgh Today at that time. And there was a general manager who was a wonderful general manager by the name of Carolyn Wien. Mm -hmm. And sh she had the ability to, to see 
uh, people who had talent, at least that she knew could be developed. Uh, I'm not saying that because no, no, she but, did it yeah. with us, but I mean, some of the people that came through this station that she thought were, were going to be good turned out to be really good people. Mm -hmm. And she always felt that you and I should be together. I don't know mm -hmm. if you knew this or not. No, I was unaware of that, yeah. Mm. Because I used to host a program called uh, Weekend Magazine. Right. I and I remember one time they brought you in on Weekend Magazine to co-host it with yes. me. She was always testing to see whether the two of us could work. It was after she left that it finally happened that uh, uh, Ray uh, had a stroke, uh, which mm -hmm. thank goodness was not that detrimental to him. And uh, he w went off the 11 o'clock. And so I anchored the 11 for my, by myself for a while and then they put, they put you on right. because mm -hmm. Pittsburgh Today went away and they put you on, mm -hmm. and uh, we didn't know how we were going to work together, whether it was going to work or not, but she's such a nice person that it's very oh difficult not to work <laughs> with Patrice. <laughs> and, but going back to what you're talking about, you start to, this relationship on the set, mm -hmm. and soon when you get to the breaking news, you know when the other person is starting to run out of not necessarily steam, but the, the thought process for the breaking news, and the other one knows when, then, when, when to, to jump up. in yeah. and, and, and carry the story on. And you, you, you yin and yang it like that. And we did a pretty good job I think like that. that. I think that we did. There was, you did. I think yeah. that it was, it was something that, I mean, obviously we're working at learning early on. But when you think of some of the big moments, um, like, like that, the plane crash. And that was one of the first times that we were together that it was a really, you know, there were no news breaks. There were, it was something that hit very close to home here. We had our coverage picked up, as you said, nationally. Which we didn't and know at the time. No, we didn't know. Yeah, we were unaware of that. And what you don't want to do in something like that is sensationalize it because it is sensational enough. You know, so you want to deliver that information to your viewers as you would want to hear it. And, yeah. and well, it was our conversation and listening. Well, I think what we knew in the back of our head was because the flight was coming from Chicago to Pittsburgh, there were Pittsburghers on that flight who perished. Right. Yeah. And um, you, I, I found out you know, uh, 20 years later uh, from the support group for that plane crash that um, they indeed, relatives were watching us that night. Mm -hmm. And um, so I've always said that when you're on that set and you're, you're speaking to the, to the viewer that you've got to make it on a one-on-one -on -one basis, yes. that you're yes. talking to one person, not, not the everybody. Room. Yes. Because that one person is relating to what you have to say. Yeah. Well, and for you and me, I mean, it's the same thing. It, you know, we pick up where each leaves off, and it's like you get a rhythm. Mm -hmm. You kind of know it. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, you're the first person I want to anchor Breaking News with because we have that relationship. And for us, I remember it was early on when I started anchoring the five with you, it was the three police officers in Stanton Heights who were yes. killed. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. That we really, you know, had just to, it was such a tough story because yep. it Very difficult yeah. story for yeah, you guys. It was so tough and just so sad. And I just remember one of the officers, his daughter was named Chloe, like my daughter mm -hmm. was the same age. And just how tough that was and being at the funeral together and yes. just, you know, how that really brings us together too, because we're experiencing that right. trauma. Yes. And that, you know, uh, together and with the city and um, trying to, you know, be, we are part of this community, so we're feeling that too. Yeah, all my memories of that are, are vivid, yeah. and I remember how comfortable it was working with you, and I've always appreciated uh, your skills as a breaking news partner. Um, so we definitely remember those, you know, those very dark days when we are called upon to report awful news. Right, right. Um, but you know what? I think about, uh, our free care fund telethons. I think about our Christmas parties back in the day uh, that we would have up in Mount Washington or other locations. And um, I think that, uh, I think for, for so many of us, um, it's our job, this is how we make a living. Right. Um, but there's more to it because, well, for those of us who are for on air, we represent KDK to a lot of people. Right. And oh, people yeah. will, will come up to me and, and they may not know my name, but they'll say, what's Patrice King Brown really like? No. <laughs> <laughs> or, or tell me about Stacy Smith. And I say, well, I, I groom his mustache daily. Um, <laughs> just, um, you know, just being, just being associated with, uh, but with this group has been a real kick. Uh, it's one of the things I've really enjoyed most about this, this opportunity. No, it's, it's, it's been wonderful. It was wonderful. I, it, I miss the city and then of course, you know, and I, no matter where, I told you I, I came in this week, and no matter where I live, this is still home. 
as far as I'm yeah. concerned, it's like I'm flying, I'm coming in, into home. And I did have somebody say to me, didn't you used to be Patrice King Brown? <laughs> oh, that's just hysterical. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah. <I've laughs> <laughs> but well, and, they, and then but the other thing is, people always want to know about your families. They know your your children, you know, names. It, it, we don't always, I think, talk about our kids all the time, or or and our children are grown. Um, but you, it, people look at us as friends. We come into their home. It's actually a rather intimate experience mm -hmm. when you think of it that way. You know, they're maybe in their robe watching, you know, sitting and watching us. So, well, I, I, if I can bring it this up. We're talking about sure. 75 years of, of KDKA yeah. and the changes that have been made mm. in broadcasting altogether. First of all, the way the studio is right now uh, and, the, and the kind of cameras that there's now no one behind the camera, oh, uh, yes. so to speak. I mean, absolutely, actually operating the camera. Yeah, the uh, robotic. <laughs> when, when, I, when I started in broadcasting, we we're still using film. Then we went to tape and when we came here, we were going from uh, three quarter to, to half inch mm -hmm. tape and then it goes now we're it's digital, digital and you can use your phone out on the field to, to do everything um, the, the the climate has changed as well because when I, I, probably for you too I'm not sure about you Christine but when you first got into broadcasting it were basically three stations in the town that was it mm -hmm. there was cable but there weren't cable newscasts going on. There was Satellite News Channel, right, which right. Westinghouse tried to start, <clears throat> and um, uh, CNN was starting, but they weren't the powerhouses that they are now. And then you didn't yeah, have MSNBC, and you didn't have Fox, and you didn't have all these others. And they all have come now to, to kind of eat at the pie of the viewer that, that, that was so large when it was just three stations. But through all of these changes, it still comes down to People want to connect with that person who was mm -hmm. on television mm -hmm. more than anything else, yeah. or what that or what that station represents and how they represent themselves. Well, that's interesting because you're right. I mean, now my kids are watching a lot of their news on TikTok and Instagram, <coughs> and there's just so many outlets, and it is so splintered. But at the same time, I think ultimately KDKA is more than just a TV station. It is a big part of this community the call letters, the missions like the free care fund and um, you know the turkey to fund drive. I mean, all of those are just such a big part of this community and, and connecting with people ultimately is what it comes down to. You know, there was, the, you, you raise a really good point and there was something else that was, was going on when, when I got here and it, um, that's when the, when the steel mills started mm. to close. Oh yes, yeah, yeah we had. Um, now, the, Patrice always blames me that we went from nine to like 20 something in things because <laughs> when I, once I started, I drove people away. But, that, <laughs> okay, you know, no. um, but, but at that time, we also had what was called Katie's Army. Yes, we and did. That, and, oh and my that, gosh, and that, yes. So we, you had Katie's Army when I first got here. Al Julius started the Turkey Fund. The, the, the Free Care Fund had already started 70, yes. years, 70 yeah. years ago. Mm -hmm. and, and so this station's always connected so much with the viewer at, at home and, and tried, tried to be part of that viewer's life and the viewer has welcomed it more than anything They have, when you, when you mentioned Katie's Army though, we would go out, they would send all, those of us who were on air out to different locations and, and we would work with the food bank, have people come make donations because you're right, that was when the steel, the bottom had fallen out so to speak for, for a while before Pittsburgh once again reinvented itself uh, as Pittsburgh continues to do. Yeah. Uh, and we, you would meet people, you would spend time with people, talking to them, uh -huh. and they would feel, you know, they would get to know you a little bit because mm -hmm. of your exposure at, at those, and we would go out week after week after week. Well, we would, they would bring the big trucks down here okay. and, and studio personnel, uh, the engineers, uh, the talent, uh, people on air, Every, yeah. uh, sales staff, everybody would help pack those trucks and they would, and then some of the talent would go out, uh, talent being people on who are on the air, mm -hmm. Uh, with the trucks and help distribute, distribute the food, the food to, wow. to those people. Yeah. And I feel like for us, the pandemic, we were a yeah. public service to people. I mean, they were stuck in their homes. Right. We Absolutely. were all stuck, yeah, scared, right. didn't know what was going to happen. And, you know, the television and, and, you know, official news sources were so important. And then the connection, okay, this is someone I trust, someone I know, I know is in my community. I see them at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I've watched their kids grow up. I mean, I've had three babies while I've been here. Everyone's yes. seen me all different sizes. So 
Um, but you know, don't you feel like that with the yes. pandemic? It yeah. was like a very different experience. Yeah, absolutely. It's something that we all went through together. Uh, news station and, and viewers yeah. went through it together mm -hmm. at the same time. So I have this theory about Pittsburgh. Tell me if it's sappy or if you, if you guys disagree. But I think that the economic upheaval that you referenced back in the 1980s when the steel industry collapsed, I think that that generated in Pittsburghers a sense of collective conscious and yes. we are we have each other's backs mm -hmm. and I think it's reflected in the way people here support the turkey fund every year yes. and they support the free care fund telethon every year and they support other uh, charitable endeavors I think there's empathy and there's heart in Pittsburgh mm -hmm. my conviction is that it's it's greater here than in other places I can't <laughs> prove that but I, I believe it hundred percent right hundred percent I think you remember you remember Stacy too there there was the phrase, and I'm, I'm not sure that it, I believe that it may have come from KD Radio and Jack Bogut, who called it Pittsburgh Someplace Special. Yeah. Mm. And, and that, is, that was true then, and it remains true. And I think that that does create that. We've been through the wars together, but we will support each other. Yeah. You know, you're doing the KD f Turkey Fund, and you can always say, yeah, people are struggling, but people will help. Here in Pittsburgh, they will come through and support each other. And you I mean, see it over and over again. Uh, I worked 12 years before I, in broadcasting before I got here to Pittsburgh. And I have to think you're right, Ken, when I take, take a look back at the cities in which I worked. Uh, each station had some big event each year, uh, similar to the Children's Hospital Telethon. Um, but they didn't have as many different events take place as this station has through the years. And the reason that they're able to do it is because they can connect with the people. And I think you're right. Uh, Children's Hospital worked early on because how can you not help the children? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, it, it's that simple. It, 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 mm -hmm. When you get right down to it, you present it the right way, people are going to reach into their hearts and in their wallets and help the children who, are, who need that help and the families mm -hmm. that need that help. And then when we had uh, the collapse of the steel industry and the way KD was able to present the fact that we are here to help our neighbors right. and neighbors helping neighbors, that is a Pittsburgh thing really. So there were so many different ways. I think you're right. And it goes back to the, to the collapse of the steel industry that we're able to continue to see this sort of activity. And I think there's a little bit too, just so many people grew up here and stay here in such a family oriented right. town yes. compared yes. to all the other cities I've been in other than maybe Milwaukee, which is a similar to a Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. um, but people, you know, really want to come home. Um, there's so many people who move mm -hmm. away and, mm -hmm. and come back. And I don't know, I just, there's such an emphasis on family and, and part of the family is love. And I just feel like people are willing to give that, not just to their family, but to new people who come. I mean, I know I felt like that so welcomed when I first got there, here. There is a very strong pride here yes. in Pittsburgh. And I think it is because Pittsburgh has done, has gone through so many changes and survived and still, you know, you have difficulty, but they, they're doing so many different things and we just keep seeing it. You know, and, over and over I again. think you add into that, uh, the Steelers of the 70s that you referenced before, while that, oh yeah. we had the steel industry going down, the Steelers were something besides helping one another that this community could latch onto and provided pride. Oh, provided pride and hope. Pirates too. And the Pirates, and the Pirates yeah, too. 70s. And then, yeah. yeah, that we had, yeah, in fact, we were, we had everything. We had all those titles. It was the City of Champions. Well, yeah. I was going to say, even more recently, we've had several Super Bowls and, and, you know, Penn's wins. I mean, I remember being out there, you know, with all the parades, and that's one of the most fun experiences of getting to work yes. here is mm -hmm. to being there in the parades and meeting the, you know, the players who come in here and just what an honor that is to get to do. If, can I, before, I know you're going to say something, yeah. but can I go, if, if you want to continue this, because I had another thing I wanted to bring Very up. Very quickly. In how many other cities do you see people wearing jerseys from players who played 50 years ago? <laughs> <laughs> people true. are showing That's up true. every Sunday at Acrisure Stadium wearing Jack Lambert's jersey. That's, yeah. true. That's, that's true. I don't think that happens everywhere. No, that's no, true. And he hasn't been so. on the field for a long oh, time. I, I yeah. think you're right. Yeah. Where I was going to go with this also is the fact that I've said, you know, that broadcasting has changed so much over 75 years at KDKA. <clears throat> you have to really give a lot of praise to the technical staff, the engineers that have worked at this station for little things that, that happened oh, yeah. to come up. I don't know if you remember the time that we lost electricity I and do. we had to move the newscast outside. outside. Uh, I mean, and they did it. I mean, we lost, there was a major power outage for whatever reason in this in station. In the whole center, yeah. And uh, we, could, we could get power to run the cameras 
in the control room, but we couldn't use the lights. And there was no air conditioning and, and in the there building. There was no air conditioning in the building. And so we, it was right around the time of the um, uh, uh, arts, arts festival, festival. Mm -hmm. which all was held here at, at Gateway Center. And the, the, our, our engineering staff, these guys, they they made it work outside. It was it was tremendous no, the way they did that. that. I do remember that. And then when we had the the water main break and the place was flooding, yeah. what oh, they, that's what what they I did. Yeah, yeah, we were out. That's when we were out, outside. I remember yeah. being outside. What for they that did time. just a to salvage what was being being flooded inside the yeah. station and then get a broadcast on that same day. I tip my hat to these guys. Yeah. They are great. Yeah, yeah. So totally true. so skilled. I think, there, I think there's still a connection, forgive me if this sounds self-serving, but I think there's still a unique connection that KDK has with this city. And uh, it's reflected in many ways through our charitable partnerships and, and in our news coverage. Um, we, we understand what's important to our viewers in, I think, deep DNA level ways. I joke with Christine and some other people here that we cover Kennywood <laughs> like it's the United Nations Security Council. <laughs> If there is any item of news connected to Kennywood, we know people want to know about that. They want to know about the individual rides at Kennywood uh, that they grew we up know riding. Them. Yeah, right? that's right. I mean, you, you know, again, them. tell me that there, there's an amusement park in Denver where they have that kind of connection <laughs> to it. I think it's all part of Pittsburgh. When you know, they all know that the Jack to each Rabbit, other. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> we all went to we all went to this amusement park, you know, on, uh, for a thing. end of school year mm -hmm. field yeah. trip and just. Yeah. You know, all of these traditions, and because people do tend to either stay or return here, yeah. um, I think it just, it makes working at a television station like this all the more rewarding. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's one, it's been a wonderful thing. It's, it's amazing that it is 75 years, and I think of the, the, the people, the stories that have gone through here, the people who have come through, um, and the gift that it is to the city, and, but also how appreciative the city is, and what those call letters, you're right. You know, it used to be a destination to tune in at you know, noon, six, 11, and now you're right, people are getting it on so many different levels. Um, but to think about, Pittsburgh has also been a gift to all of us mm -hmm. because they've been so supportive and, um, and, and just friendly and warm and loving. And now, you know, 75 years they've given to the station as well. You just made some, a, a good mention though also, you said the call letters. You can't go across this country yeah. and not say the call letters KDKA. Right without people knowing, mm -hmm. if they're in, the, if they're in broadcasting yes. especially, they know those four letters right. more than any other letters That's in the right. country, for sure. Yep. Well, thank you guys for this great conversation. It's well, so enjoyed wonderful it. thank to you. have Absolutely. you both back yeah. to celebrate 75 years. We'll see you for the 150th. Sounds <laughs> like a plan. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Thanks.